welcome to this handy Houdini tips video. So the last Houdini tips video didn't have a name or anything, but it will still be part of a playlist or something, we'll sort it out. For this one, we're going over colliders. A lot of the time in Houdini, when you're simulating, you need colliders for whatever simulation you may be doing. You may need some rocks interacting with some water, whatever it is. If that collider happens to be animated or deforming, oftentimes it can take a lot of simulating time for Houdini to calculate the collider for each frame. So we're going over the most efficient way to create those deforming colliders. And part of that is creating proxies. So we're going to go over some of the methods that you have at your disposal. And I'm going to show you the absolute best way that I have found to create colliders that run super efficiently. So let's go ahead into Houdini. I have a file set up, it's nothing special. We have a bit of a flip tank. So this is just auto generated with some shelf tools. And this tank over here is interacting with this collider. This collider over here is just a sphere that expands outwards, just like that, right? So we have that in our dotnet over here as this static object. As you can see, we're bringing it in soft path. We've set it to be a deforming geometry. If we take a look at the actual collider, so if we go under here and we switch off display geometry and activate our collision guide, we can see that it's a little bit of a blobby mess. So generally, you would increase your uniform divisions. So let's push this up to something like 100, right? So as you can see already, it took a moment for that to calculate. We're now creating a higher quality collider and that takes a bit of time. So we're going to hide that collision guide again and once again, display our geometry. Now, if we play this back, it will calculate our colliders SDF each and every frame, right? So it will create a volume and it will calculate at each frame. It then feeds that volume into the solver and the solver does some of its own things with that. Right, so it creates a collision mask, and that collision mask is used to move things around. That's how a collision works. If we take a look at this, by default, it will just run, and each frame it will have to calculate it. But Houdini does have something where you can save out the collisions, right? So you can save out the collisions and then call them again, so you don't have to calculate them if you're doing the simulation again, which is a pretty useful thing to have. So if you wanted to do that, you would go down to the bottom of this collider, and where it says file mode over here, instead of no operation, we would set it to write. We want to write some files to disk. The type of file that this would write out would be a collision file. And that takes the form of sim data. So over here, we're just going to choose a place to save it. So we're going to go to these caches, collider caches. Over here, I'm just going to call this collider underscore dollar F. So we're saving each frame dot sim data. Now sim data is a file type for simulation data. Um, I believe that you can use bgeo.se, but I think that they also recommend this in the documentation that you do use some data. So if we do that, right, so we're now writing to disk, we can go and take a look. And over here in this file, we have this collider1.sim data. So this is the first frame's sim data. It's a three megabyte file saved out to disk. Now, this is going to happen every frame. And let's actually monitor the performance of this. To monitor the performance, we can bring up the performance monitor. We're going to press Alt plus Y, and that will bring it up. If you also just want to open it up manually, go to Windows, and over here at this section that I'm showing, there is the performance monitor. Now, the way the performance monitor works is you click record, you run a simulation, and it'll save it as a profile. You click record again, it'll create a new profile, and you can keep doing that, and you can compare your simulations. So in this case, we're going to hit record, and then I'm going to press play on the simulation, and we're going to see how long that takes. So record and play. All right, as soon as that's finished, I'm going to stop the record, and we can now take a look at the information that we have. So if we take a look in here, I'm just going to break this down for you so you can understand what's going on in here. This is giving you the amount of time that each process took to run. So if we take a look at this, the flip solver, naturally, took the most time, 44 seconds, right? 44 seconds of a total one minute and four seconds for the entire simulation. Now, if we go into that flip solver, there's this gas bolt collision mask, right? And that over there is what I was talking about. It takes your collider and turns it into a mask to be used for whatever operations it may need. So in this case, that took 16 seconds. However, if we minimize the flip solver, we'll also notice something on the static object. That took 18 seconds. And that 18 seconds, was used to generate the actual volumes for the colliders. So if we were to eliminate that 18 seconds, then we'd only be left with 
the flip solver side of it, right? The gas projection, the gas building, and all of the operations that the flip solver performs. And that's exactly what this does over here. If we now switch this file mode to read, it'll now read that from disk, right? So if we jump back to the start over here, and I'm just gonna rename this profile to write. So this is where we wrote it. Now we're going to record, run the simulation again, and see what happens, right? Technically, what should happen is the static object should be removed. You shouldn't need that time to calculate the volume anymore because it has been saved to disk as some data. So if we now press record and run it again, we'll see what we get. All right, so I stopped it as it completed. Now, let's take a look at this one. So I'm going to rename this profile to read. We now have read and write, two separate profiles. If we take a look at the total time, it has decreased, right? If we look at the write time, that was one minute. If we look at the read time, 44 seconds. So in the case where we were writing these files to disk, it took about 16 seconds longer. If we now take a look at where the time has been saved and we minimize the flip solver, you'll see that the static object is basically doing nothing. It's not actually generating anything. It's just reading those files from disk, completely cutting out what it has to do in this process. Now, the solver itself still has to build a gas collision mask, right? So it builds that mask and that mask still takes time, 16 seconds. And overall, our simulation does go a lot faster, but it still has to perform some operations and there are some other downsides to this. So the biggest downside I would say is firstly that you have to write out the entire simulation, right? So you have to run the simulation from start to finish let all of these colliders write to disk and only then do you have access to these right only then can these sim data files be generated and it actually doesn't work if you run just the collider i've tried it before and it doesn't interact with your simulation geometry and so what you have to do is actually run the simulation now this is fine in a simulation that takes 44 seconds but if this is you know an 18 hour simulation that's really not optimal you don't want to be writing all of these to disk only to be able to use them 18 hours later so what is the more efficient way of doing this? Well, we can use proxies. So I'm going to just minimize this over here and we're going to go ahead and go up a level to our collisions and over here, we're going to add something. So I'm going to drop another null and this one over here, we're gonna call proxy. So this is going to be our proxy collider. And for this to work, all we need to do is do a VDB from polygons. So we take our original collider, we convert it to a VDB, and we can have a fairly high resolution VDB. We'll do something like 0.05, maybe even lower, 0.1. Like that's pretty high fidelity, right? That's a high quality collider. And you can go even lower with that, not a big deal. It runs so quickly, just like that. Now, if we drop a file cache node right over here, and I'm just going to set this to explicit and choose a file path, we're just going to go over here to our caches, collider caches, and we're going to add a proxy. So proxy underscore $f dot VDB. So we're saving this as a VDB sequence, right? Each frame is being saved as a VDB. We can load this from disk and then save it to disk. So this won't take very long, a few seconds. You can see it's almost real time. And there we go, right, saved to disk. And we can take a look at these. We have these proxies over here. Their file size is slightly bigger. So they are bigger than the sim data files that we created earlier, but I'll show you the benefit of this shortly. So we can now output this as our proxies. So if we take a look at this, we just have this VDB sequence, right? If we now go back to our simulation network, there's a few changes that we'll need to make. Firstly, we no longer want this file mode. So we're not reading anything from disk and we can just set this to no operation, right? So when this is on no operation, it won't do any reading or writing. However, it will need to still look for proxy geometry. In and of itself, it doesn't load that proxy geometry from disk. You need a file cache in another SOP node. So we'll say over here, proxy volume and choose the proxy, right? Just like that. The last thing you need to do is just go over here to the mode and set it to volume sample. It will now sample the volume, right? So it's sampling that proxy volume that we created. Now, if we run the simulation, let's take a look at what we end up with. So again, bringing up our performance monitor, let's go ahead and record and play our simulation. 
And there we go. Stop it at frame 24. I'm going to rename this just to proxy. And let's actually take a look at these results because these are pretty crazy. So let's get into all of this tasty data. So, sorry, I'm a sucker for good data. So if we look at this and we go to the right profile, this is the one where our collision geometry was cached out to disk, right? So in our actual static object, we wrote all of these files to disk. Logically, this makes sense. The static object took 18 seconds to write all those files to disk and to create volumes and all of that, right? The flip solver had to also build the gas collision mask. So that took 16 seconds, 18 seconds from the static object. And so if we go over to the read, remember we eliminated that need for the 18 seconds. It no longer had to write to disk. It could now just read it. And by reading it, it eliminated anything that the static object had to do. And what we were left with was the gas building process. Now, if we go over to our proxy and take a look at what happened here, we have a very interesting situation. So the static object actually took even less time than when it had to read from disk. That's pretty crazy, right? It went faster than when it had to read from disk by using a proxy. So that's the one thing. We eliminated the 18 seconds. And another thing that happened is that this gas building now isn't even really an issue. It took two seconds as opposed to 16. So we actually cut off, what is that? 14 seconds and 18 seconds. We cut off 32 seconds, right? 32 seconds just off of those two things. And all we did was convert our collider to a VDB and cache it to disk. That caching to disk also only took maybe like 10 seconds. The other crazy thing is that you don't have to run the entire simulation to generate these proxies, right? In the first case where we wrote to disk, this actually isn't very efficient at all because we have to run the entire simulation, cache everything to disk, and only then can we read it. Only the second time that we run our simulation can we really make use of the speed increase. However, with our proxy, immediate, right? We can just use this process, and I'm going to take you through the process again, super quickly, just so that you can remember it. So the process is you go to your collider, whatever collider it is that you have in your simulation, and you convert it to a VDB. So just do a VDB from polygons. That's all you need to do. Get a good voxel size that's representative of your geometry. Cache that out to disk. So we've cached it out to disk and it now loads basically instantly. Have a little null that makes it easy to reference your proxy. And then inside of your simulation, we have your static object right over here. The only things that you'll need to do is ensure that it's using deforming geometry. Set your mode to volume sample and down at the bottom, choose a proxy volume, ensuring that you don't have any sort of file mode setting, just set that to no operation. So it'll fetch that proxy volume and use volume sample. And just like that, you have much faster simulations. So I hope that helped you. And if it did, then feel free to leave a comment, leave a like, tell me what you liked about this video, what you wanna see next. Is there anything that would really help you out that you're struggling with? Because I know that this is something that was quite a game changer for me actually. It really sped up my simulation times and I didn't have to struggle with my colliders as much as I used to. So this was a big one for me. If you liked this video, again, hit that like button. If you really liked the video, go ahead and hit the join button. That will buy us a coffee and we can keep the caffeine fueled content going. And so, yeah, I hope to see you next time. Do please consider supporting. And again, I'll see you next time. Bye.